What's the newest fashion accessory? Stay tuned to Beads, Baubles, and Jewels to find out. I'm here with Tammy Hahnemann of Fire Mountain Gems and Beads, and Tammy is going to show us how to make a gorgeous crystal bracelet or choker that goes well with all of your wonderful pins. Yes, this piece is so fun to make, and it can be done in so many different ways. Okay, it's beautiful. Um, and like you said, it can be a bracelet or a choker, mm -hmm. um, but we'll, we'll start with the beginning, and then you can make that decision as you get further ahead. Okay. Uh, we're going to start with a 12-inch length piece of sterling silver chain, and okay. I cut three of them. Um, okay. You can vary that, but I like to start with three, and then you can build as you go. Nice round you... number. Three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go with that. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm um, just stringing the crystals on a simple head pin. Mm -hmm. I start with a four millimeter diamond shaped crystal. Okay. I'm just going to put that onto the head pin and go through my first layer of chain. Okay. And I like to work about an inch, inch and a half down. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to just continue to add crystals as I go. Oh, okay. Building my chain, mm -hmm. going through the next layer. So I'm oh. capturing it in between the crystals. And you can do it just whichever order you'd like as far as the crystals, depending on what you're designing. Absolutely. You do okay. want to keep the spacing in mind. Mm -hmm. If you're going to create a six millimeter size, you want to maintain that six millimeter down the entire length point. of the that's chain. That's a very good point. Because yeah. the chain will start to have a ripple effect. And unless that's what you're going for, it really doesn't. Yeah. Doesn't work. That's true. And then just to end it, you want to just put another four millimeter bicone diamond shaped bead on there. Mm hmm Like that. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And then I'd like to just finish that off with a simple loop, which will capture the crystals and the chain together. Mm -hmm. And I'll, with that, I'll do my chain nose pliers. Okay. I'm going to bend that to a 90 degree angle. Yeah. And then I just need to trim that to three-eighths of an inch. Just use your cutters. Just going to take the wire cutters oops, and just trim that to a three-eighths of an inch, approximately. You don't have to measure it. Mm -hmm. uh, you do want to try to have some uniformity in your simple loops. Right. So you want to try to get a good, um, when you, once you get a good measurement, you want to kind of stick with that. Okay. Then I'm just going to take my round nose pliers. And this also dictates the size of your simple loop where you place your wire oh. in between the round nose pliers. Gotcha. Um, and once you start, you want to, you can either use an indelible marker mm -hmm. and mark your pliers so that you can um, determine where that actually is on your pliers mm -hmm. so that you can just make that repetition. Yeah. I'm just going to place that in there. You want that uniformity. Absolutely. And you just rotate it. And if you need to adjust it, you just want it to be so it's a little yeah. crooked. You want to just, you can just adjust it. It's, it's not a very difficult wire to work with. And you just want to adjust it. Good. So that's your there first you one. And once you've established that, your chain will kind of stay together and mm -hmm. work well together. And then you just want to continue that down the entire length of your chain. So you just measure it out and just keep the trend going exactly the way you just did that one. Exactly. You do several of them, depending on the length of what you're making. Exactly, exactly. Okay. And you want to uh, space them apart about the same. I, I've used the links as my gauge, mm -hmm. and I just have three links in between each row mm -hmm. of crystals. Okay. Uh, and then depending on how you're going to finish your necklace or your bracelet, I like to use a wrapped loop, which okay. is a nice secure finish. The chain is all soldered together and you want to stick with that oh, security yeah. factor. Yes. And by creating a wrapped loop, you're keeping a very closed, um, closed form instead of using just a jump ring, which would have mm -hmm. a slit in it. Um, so you want to just make a wrapped loop. I have uh, about a three and a half inch piece of wire. Mm -hmm. And about an inch and a half down, I'm going to grip that in between my round nose pliers. Okay. Bend that over to a 90 degree angle. I'm going to rotate, oops, not the wire, my pliers. <laughs> up there. Okay. I'm going to bring that up and over the nose of the pliers. Okay. I'm going to turn the pliers once again and continue to bring that wire down and around, creating the wrap. The loop. The loop, okay. And then what I do is open up that loop just enough, just not opening it outwards. Oh, I'm you opening have to get just. The chains in first, of course. Right, exactly. exactly. Now we're just going to take the last link of each of the chains. Mm -hmm. Like one, two, three. Mm -hmm. And then you just want to make sure they're in there now so that when you, you close the it, they stay. Gotcha. Close that back down like that. Mm -hmm. And then just gripping this loop, continue to grip that loop firmly. Oops. And that's when you're closing it up and securing it. Exactly. That. I'm just going to continue to wrap this around. Okay. Great. And then you trim, trim the wire. Mm-hmm. There, we could leave that for now. 
Okay, so, so you would that. be, at that point, you would just put a clasp on if you wanted to make a bracelet. That's correct. correct. Okay. Yep, you can put a loop on one end and mm -hmm. then your lobster clasp or whatever clasp you've chosen on this end. But if you wanted to make a choker and go a little further, you have another step. Yes. Okay. Um, so before we would go any further, we would mm -hmm. take this mm -hmm. and continue to make another wrapped loop. Okay. And again, before closing that wrapped loop, you want to add a length of chain. Okay. And I used um, a larger link on this right. segment of the chain, it just kind of adds another mm -hmm. level of texture. And then I do the same thing on this side where I make a second wrap loop mm -hmm. and then I use a really long length of chain. Right. And that's what we have right here. Good. And then I'll just yeah. move this, excuse me. Over. Thank you. Sure. And then to finish this, um, this is where I will use a jump ring. Right. And to open a jump ring, you want to make sure that you're gripping the slit in the jump ring right at like 12, what it would be 12 o'clock on a clock. Mm -hmm. And you want to position your hands on either side with your mm -hmm. pliers and then just rotate your hand away. Great. Okay? And then, and then just, just to attach. do that, yep, you just want to link your lobster clasp there through the last link of chain. Mm -hmm. And then just keep continuing to add more drops. That's perfect. Now let's look, that looks very easy to do, which is amazing. Let's look at the finished product over here. And you see at the end you just added some great dangles because you have those open loops. Right. right and I just use jump rings for those. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so easy. And then, of course, you have all of the other gorgeous items. You can see the necklace and the bracelets. And then look at these necklaces when you get a little bit more advanced. <laughs> well, it's a great process, and it's not very difficult at all. Yeah. Well, that's great. Thank you so much, Tammy. Oh, this thank you. This is a beautiful you. necklace or bracelet. Remember, something to add for your pin. We'll be right back on Beads, Bubbles, and Jewels.